Welcome back to the Tapes Archive Podcast, where we release interviews that have never been heard before. In this episode, we have one of the greatest heavy metal vocalists of all times, Ronnie James Dio. At the time of this interview in 1985, Dio was 43 years old and was promoting his Sacred Heart album and tour. In the interview, Dio talks about filling Ozzy Osbourne's shoes in Black Sabbath, a mystical experience that almost killed his wife, his thoughts on Richie Blackmore's playing, and his metal all-star project, Hearing Aid. The interview is conducted by a new tape archive contributor, Canadian music journalist and author, Steve Newton. During his four decades as a freelance music writer, he has interviewed everyone from ACDC to ZZ Top. We highly recommend that you head over to his Patreon page, link in the description, and check out over 340 of his exclusive interviews. For only five bucks, you get full access. We are not paid for this endorsement. We just truly feel it's money well spent. For zero money, you can head over to Newton's website, earofnewt.com, where he has posted more than 3,000 of his interviews, album reviews, concert reviews, and horror movie reviews. A big thanks to Steve Newton for allowing us to share this very rare interview with you. Thanks for tuning in, and now it's time to open the vault. Hello? Hello, I'm speak to Steve. This is Steve. Steve, this is Ronnie Dio. How are you, Ron? How are you doing? Pretty good. Uh, we all set to do this one? Yeah, yeah. Great. How's the tour going? Uh, we've got a little bit of break now, which is the nice part of it, I think. Mm-hmm. We've all been on the road since August the 10th, and we have only been off for about a week now. And we just have this brief little uh, Christmas encounter, and then we're going to come to you straight away on the 28th. Does the tour end on the 31st? No, the tour doesn't end until probably uh, August again. Uh, we still have the dates in Canada to do some more in, in the States, followed by a uh, British tour, European tour, and then back for about three more months in the States. Oh, pretty heavy tour there. Yeah, it's a long one. Is it the longest one you've ever taken? I think it is the longest one we've done. I think the next longest one was in Sabbath. We were out for about nine months. But this one, with the, especially with the States set that we've got, it seems kind of a shame to only use it for three months out of a, out of a year. We may as well get all the mileage we can out of it, because it's such a great show. We want to you know take it as many places as possible. Yeah, from what I've been hearing about it, it's quite a mind-blower there. I'm oh, looking yeah, forward it's a real to... monster. First off, I wanted to ask you, uh, what's happening with Hearing Aid? Uh, hearing Aid should be released, uh, if not uh, in January, then the very beginning of February. We wanted to make it kind of after the fact, after a lot of the live aid and... Uh, we are the world, and et cetera, et cetera. We wanted to have it not so much more special, but just to remove it a little bit. Uh, the kind of music that we play and the people who are involved in it are always accused of being something other than what they are anyway, something awful. So we thought we may as well take it all away and we'll just separate ourselves from everybody. Like I guess that's what they'll do to us anyway. Really, the problem was in logistics. We have an album that will be released from this project as well. And the problem with time and that is that everybody's always working. Everybody who plays this kind of music is usually out on the road. So getting them all together and getting all the bits and pieces together for a, a one-time proper release has been a bit difficult. It'll be January for the single, which is called Stars, and a video as well that has, was done for Stars and with Stars. That'll be released as well. And then probably about a month after that should be uh, the album. Oh, what songs are on the album? Who plays them? Well, they'll all be, uh, as of yet, we haven't got them all together. They'll be, uh, as yet, unreleased tracks by uh, a lot of good people. Uh, Judas Priest uh, are going to give one. Maiden, they're going to do one. We're going to do one. I think Dawkins is going to do one. I think uh, Quiet Riot are going to do one. There's quite a few people, and there are a lot of others who, who we haven't uh, got the planning for yet. But mm-hmm. uh, those are some of the people involved. I'm looking forward to that one. Yeah, it'll be great. Do you still write songs about watching sports on TV? I do, yeah, I do. I did all the albums that I've done. I think I've been watching some kind of sporting event, uh, and only because it really relaxes me. It, there's no music in the background, and I, I, I love athletics anyway. And it's kind of my fantasy. I always wanted to be a great sports star, so I'm writing about fantasy things while I'm watching my fantasy. So it all works for me. What's your favorite sport to watch? Well, my favorite sport to write by is uh, basketball. Well, I would say my favorite sport is uh, football. You started out as a trumpet player. Yeah. And you were five. That's right. How did you like that? I didn't care for it very much, to tell you the truth. Uh, I was one of those kids who uh, had to be forced to practice, and all I wanted to do was play baseball, or play football, or ride my bike, whatever it was. You know, when you're five years old, you want yeah, to do right. five-year-old things. I, I think it made me grow up a lot faster, maybe a little bit harder, because I had to do something that I really didn't want to do, did pursue it, did go after it. Uh, my folks thought it was important, and after all, they were bigger than me, and so I had to do what they said. 
it was it was great training for me as a singer, especially. It was great uh, training as a musician too. I mean, I learned you know how to read, how to write. It introduced me to classical music, which is something I love a lot. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about that. Uh, I interviewed Ingvi about a month ago, and uh, he said he's heavily into that classical. Is that the same with you? Well, I think that uh, I think for a start, most guitar players are into classical music because. Uh, a lot of the technique is, is very, especially violin technique, is mm -hmm. the same as the guitar technique. You, you'll find probably that a lot of guitar players will tell you that Vivaldi is one of their favorite uh, composers. I imagine they probably told you that too. Vivaldi seems to be someone that they all love just because of the technique, the way he wrote. It seems guitarish in nature. For me, I've always been a Bach lover. I've always been into Bach and Beethoven. Um, for their whole works, their whole pieces, not just, I don't just single out one instrument or one passage. I like all the things that they that they were able to conceive, especially Bach, who to me was like, if he had lived today, he'd be up on a stage with a guitar in his hand, bro. <laughs> no rock and roll. Do you listen to classical in your spare time? Or? Yeah, I do. I, that's mm -hmm. normally when I listen to when I'm home and I'm off the road. Uh, and especially if I'm composing, or if I'm doing something for an album, I'll definitely be listening to classical music because I don't want to listen to, to anything else that's of the same nature, I may unconsciously steal from it or borrow from it. I wouldn't do it purposely, but the listening to classical music really cleanses my mind after a long tour and mm -hmm. after having to compose in a, in a real hard rock vein. A lot of people can't seem to believe that people that are into hard rock, it's, it's boring or heavy metal, will be interested in classical. Well, I think those are pretty ignorant people who think that, that a janitor can't like classical music, that he has to, he should have to be a white collar worker to mm -hmm. like classical music any more than uh, a white collar wo worker can't love. Uh, heavy metal not rock music or mm -hmm. anything else music is put on this given to us to, to color our world and some people like blue some people like green some people like the combination of both it's just a matter of personal taste and I, I don't think that it matters what you do or what your main interest is I think music especially should be enjoyed and liked uh, in its entirety by everyone I guess it's just because as I said earlier in the conversation we're always uh, having stones thrown at us for being uh, rebels or idiots or needing baths or haircuts or whatever and uh, you know people don't take the time to stop and look inside the package they just look outside the package mm -hmm. and make a judgment and that's completely and terribly wrong yeah. that's one of the problems in this world today what about the uh, singers which which ones do you admire the most Pina? me i don't really admire an awful lot of singers i think it's because i know what they're doing and what they're either capable or, or incapable of and i don't hear all that many great singers mm -hmm. hey who is good singers what are you canadian lad is uh, mike reno i think mike's a really good singer never boy yeah the mm -hmm. music is uh you know a lot softer and a lot uh, more commercially oriented than the music that myself make, but uh, he's got great price uh, and a lot of control, good technique. I think he's he's a really good singer. As far as you know, admiring or idolizing or learning or being influenced by others, no, I'm 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 not really. Mm -hmm. And Mike Reno obviously is not the only good singer out there today. Uh, just mm -hmm. Off the top of my head, I think Mike's a really good singer. And I'm not saying it because he's Canadian, because there happen to be a hell of a lot of good American singers and British singers. You mentioned in one magazine story that you you like Barbara Streisand. Yeah, absolutely. I think she's the best female vocalist mm -hmm. ever. Mm -hmm. I mean, nobody else, you know, anyone can possibly touch the uh, the tools that she that she has. She's just fabulous. How's uh, the new album doing? Uh, it's done very well. Uh, done as well as the, the two prior to it. It's uh, very rapidly approaching platinum. I think it's probably at 900,000 now in America. Done extremely well in the rest of the world. Very, very well in Europe, as a matter of fact. So the problem at this particular moment is that there's not very much radio play, especially in this country, because of all of the, uh, the occult situations, the PMRC, all of that is, has really soured a lot of people to playing this music. That's very stupid, by the way, but it really has hurt. If your music can't be heard, nobody's going to know that it's available or even know if they don't like it or dislike it, so then they won't buy it. In a climate where it, there's not a lot of sales happening, our product always does well. We always have a very broad base of loyal supporters who are always going to be there. And then our show and word of mouth converts the others, so I'm very pleased with it. Can those PMRC come down on the deal for having uh, we, cut we, messages in that? Um, we, we've not nearly been attacked as much as some of the others have, uh, but then again, we didn't deserve to be attacked in the first place. I don't write that kind of material. They have preconceived notions of, as to what someone is going to be because he or she is in uh, heavy metal music, and right away the, the stamp is on there. You're heavy metal, and you must be as bad as Blackie Lawless or as B. Snyder or whoever they think is bad. It's not been nearly as vicious for us as it has been for a few. Are you interested in the cult at all? I have no interest in black magic whatsoever. Uh, I've always been a practitioner of white magic, which is for good. I know anything you'd want to know about the occult uh, because I've studied it for a long time. Ignorance leads you down the wrong path. I don't want to be ignorant about it. I learned long ago that uh, you don't meddle with, with spirits. You don't meddle with good ones. You don't meddle with bad ones. Because once you open the door and let them in, they never go away. You can't say, well, your time's up. Fine. You know, you, you're opening up something horrible there when that happens. So <laughs> my advice to anyone is to just stay away from any kind of black magic. White magic is fine. Didn't you have some strange experiences while recording uh, Rainbow's Long Live Rock and Roll? Yes. Some, some spirit? It's a real weird 
the devil experiences with a real bad spirit that was there posing as uh, Baal, who was uh, the earliest devil uh, worshipped by the primitive people. And we got someone who claimed to be Baal and created a lot of, lot of chaos up there. The studio mm -hmm. tapes would stop. And we'd go into a locked room and machines would suddenly go on. I heard that he tried to kill your wife or something. Yeah, he pushed her down the stairs. We had a lot of a lot of problems with that one, but we got over it. Uh, it was our own fault because we started dabbling again and calling up something that we shouldn't have dealt with. Being strong believers in, in God, and by God I mean I'm not talking about the God that perhaps everyone thinks of. Feelings of religion are a lot different than others. Uh, mine is that God and the devil reside in both of us, mm -hmm. in all of us. And you just walk that fine line, uh, teetering on the brink. You can choose either the good way or the bad way. And again, the God I'm talking about, we believe in, you know, we believe in something good not something bad. And because of that you know, strong belief that all of us had in that band, we were able to overcome any problems that, that might have arisen because of dabbling in the, in the, in the dark side. But mm -hmm. yeah, we had some problems with that one. Looking back, I just wanted to ask you, uh, stepping into Black Sabbath, was that, was that a challenge to step into Ozzy's shoes? Well, as I said before, it's not very difficult to step into shoes of someone who's been barefoot all his life. <laughs> that really is not too much of a problem for me. I mean, how could anyone possibly compare Ozzy Osbourne to Ronnie Dio, especially as a singer? Ozzy's a character. It's what Ozzy is. He doesn't sing does something else. He has heart attacks on stage. Mm -hmm. He hurts animals. I guess that's what Ozzy does. I have no bone to pick with Ozzy. Ozzy happens to be a friend, but I just always make that statement when we're talking about stepping into somebody's shoes. There was no problem stepping into, again, someone's shoes who uh, shoes didn't fit. Uh, they were too small for me. I make my own shoes. Mm -hmm. It was a challenge to be into that whole situation. And the challenge was to be in Black Sabbath, not to have anything to do with Ozzy. It had nothing to mm -hmm. do with Ozzy at all. That band was a collection of Tony, Geezer, Bill, and Ozzy. It wasn't mm -hmm. Ozzy that made it go as proof of the fact that when Ozzy was no longer in the band, we survived better than we did when Ozzy was in the band, especially mm -hmm. within the last three albums that, that Ozzy was, did with the band and the, and the three albums that I did with the band. They, uh, the comparison is, uh, is pretty staggering, really. It was not a problem for me at all to be inside that band. It was a great challenge. I enjoyed it very much. It was a chance for me to take uh, a band that had uh, gotten burned up and had nothing but ashes left and to you know, make them rise up out of the ashes again to give respectability mm -hmm. to a band that deserves respectability and deserved it then. I didn't mean a, a challenge as far as I'm not having to go at you. I'm not having to go at you. Believe me, I'm not. Yeah. But the question has been asked a lot of times and put that particular way. But there was a challenge. The challenge was it was to be in that band, to be in a band that was a legend and to be more or less of an interloper in that situation, someone who had not grown up within Black Sabbath and to now have to prove himself uh, worthy of being in a band that a lot of people love. That was the challenge. I meant more or less uh, fan-wise. Uh, people would uh, you know, that's shout, where's Ozzy in that? Well, that's what I meant. The challenge was to be part of the band mm -hmm. that they remembered that was Tony, Ozzy, Geezer, and Bill. And now it was Tony, uh, Geezer, Bill, and who? Ronnie James Dio. Well, mm -hmm. See what he's got to prove. Mm -hmm. and that was the challenge thing. What do you think of Ozzy's solo stuff? Well, I think he was pretty lucky that he had Randy for a start. And then when he lost Randy, he lost most of it, I guess. Uh, he was pretty lucky to get Bob Daisley for two albums to write all the material for him. Because Ozzy is notoriously a non-writer. You may see a credit there. It's, well, we'll just have to see who's written his material for him this time, because Bob's no longer in the band. Uh, his material's good. It's, it's well done. It's interesting. Again, Ozzy's a, he's got a lot of character. And uh, I've quite liked the things he's done. I really like the album you did with Sabbath, Heaven and Hell. Yeah, Heaven I, I haven't actually heard the Mob Rules yet, but I think I'd probably like that one, too. Yeah, I think Mob Rules was actually a better album than Heaven yeah? and Hell, but mm -hmm. Heaven and Hell was the first of the two. And so, therefore, there was a lot more energy and a lot more love inside that album. After a while, it got to be you know, not quite so wonderful personally anymore, and uh, I think it, it starts to show in albums that you do. If you're not happy, you know, that's what you get, an unhappy album. You think uh, Heaven and Hell paved the way for a resurgence of heavy metal? It was absolutely one of the, the pillars of of, uh, of the resurgence in that kind of music, yes, absolutely. What are your favorite tunes that you did with Sabbath? Uh, Heaven and Hell is my favorite song. Die Young is another song I like very much from the LP. I like Neon Nights. Neon Nights is another of my favorites. Mob mm -hmm. Rule is another one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of songs on, on those LPs I like. Some I didn't. There was a song called Country Girl that I did like very much. Some I didn't care for. I'm never pleased with anything I do to, to any great degree. Mm -hmm. There are some that stand out in my mind. Heaven and Hell, of course, because it, it said something I wanted to say. I thought it was played very, very well. And it was, uh, it was a song, in the, uh, the kind of song that nobody else had ever done before. That is my favorite. I think I think of all the things I've done, I think that's my favorite song. Mm -hmm. Have you ever thought of trying to produce other rock acts? Like what happened uh, with Roger clever what he did for Elf? Well, I, I've, I've dabbled in a lot of production. I mean, of course, I produced my own material. I did most of the production in Rainbow, most of the production in Sabbath, even though we weren't able to take the credit for it and the contractual obligations. I've always been involved in everything I've done. I always produced myself as a singer. I've mm -hmm. had a lot of requests to do a lot of bands. I just haven't had the time. It's not fair for me to take that time away from this band. It's not fair for me to take to give only a bit of myself to someone I'm going to produce. If you're going to be a producer, then go ahead and do it all the way. Don't mm -hmm. uh, do it in bits and pieces. So when the time comes and there is more time, I definitely will do it. Mm -hmm. Is it true that you have a degree in pharmacy? Mm -hmm. That's right. 
You never actually used it for... Oh, no. I've forgotten so much of it. Are you still friends with Blackmore? Uh, I haven't seen Richie in two or three years. I don't know if we're friends or not. I, I don't think so. H how do you rate him as a guitarist? These days, average. In the early days, brilliant. But he's not done anything different. He still is the same as he always was. He hasn't... Uh, I mean, there are guitar players that I hear that are 15 years old. They just blow them out the back door. The thing that Richie has, he has a lot, he's got great technique. He plays with a, a lot of emotional ability. But I just don't think that a guitar player who has the great tools that Richie has is... is has done anything with it. He's stuck in the same kind of music time after time after time. Every song begins with Richie. Plays a solo in the middle and ends with Richie. I'll always admire Richie for what he was. Mm -hmm. When we're talking about in today's world, I just don't think that he's come up to the standards of the young kids who really care about their instruments. A lot of people are depending on Ingve Malmsteen to sort of take the torch. From That's a distinct possibility. It could happen. Ingve has to learn how to write first. That's his problem. He's a great guitar player and he can play all the things that Richie could play. And he probably plays most of them a lot faster. Mm -hmm. But Richie knows how to write. He knows how to get the best out of his instrument. Whereas Ingve at this particular point is still he's still learning. He's still very young. He's learning his craft. He's got to learn. He's got a lot more years to go before he's going to be the one who uh, can take that torch from Richie. Well, uh, hope the tour goes well for you. Thank you, Steve. I hope you enjoy the show. Yeah, I will. You're uh, come, aren't you? Oh, yeah, of course. All right, great. Sure, sure. Yeah. I um, love it. Uh, I was wondering, uh, would it be possible at all to get a backstage pass? Uh, sure, absolutely. Well, I'll have that for you. It'll be at the will call window. Tickets and passes. Wow. Okay. Thanks a lot, Ronnie. No problem, Steve. That's great. I want you to see the show because I know you'll like it. Okay. And we'll talk afterwards. Okay. Terrific. Thanks a lot, Ronnie. Okay, Steve. Thank you, my friend. See you. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. Hey, thanks for listening to the Tapes Archive podcast. Please remember you can always find more information about the show and the individual episodes at our website, thetapesarchive.com. Until next time, the vault is closed.